significant, the prophetic time clock of things right now. And this morning, with the foretold prophecies and the 70th week of Daniel all poised to take place, then the two prime categories I'll focus on today deal with current world events pointing directly at major end time events readying to occur. Now this first category deals with Israel and Antichrist and predicates on the news we witnessed five days ago, being the United States Embassy moving to Jerusalem and having the world's full attention fastened on Israel. And I can tell you that this attention upon Israel now is by God's own design since he is now increasingly illuminating end-time Israel as the centerpiece of today's end times. The whole world now is focused on the Middle East and Israel. This will not dissipate, but will actually increase from this point on. In fact, according to Fox News, President Trump is preparing to make public shortly his own version of his Mideast peace plan. So President Trump himself, in his good efforts towards Israel, is unwittingly setting the stage emphatically right now for the world's attention to be on the Pope, as the Pope, sooner than later, will come into the limelight and sign a seven-year agreement with End Time Israel, which is the very next major Bible prophecy which will take place, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Now here's another important point to be aware of, is that conceivably, President Trump and other world leaders could also sign on to this coming seven-year agreement. But, this is not required at all, according to Daniel 9, 27, which only specifically names two parties which are guaranteed to sign it, being Antichrist, the Pope of Rome, and end time Israel. And so those are the two parties of Daniel 9.27's prophecy to keep our eyes on, the Pope of Rome and Israel. Now, still in this first category of Israel being increasingly illuminated as the centerpiece today's end times, and there's one world leader 
who is noticeably absent altogether from Israel's 70th year anniversary celebrations and absent from USA's moving of its embassy to Jerusalem. And that is Pope Francis himself. As of several days ago, if you search for news reports, then you'll see that except for one or two quick passing remarks, months ago, actually, Pope Francis is a disappearing act as far as I could find, has not publicly congratulated Israel, nor even acknowledged Israel's 70th year anniversary whatsoever, except in a passing comment. And the reason for this indifference of the papacy towards Israel is what I've detailed in numerous YouTube videos over the years, with two of the videos being easily found on heisnear.com's front page listings of its YouTube channel. For example, one of those videos is named Proof the Pope Holds Control of Israel's Coming Third Temple and Why. That's the title of it. That was uploaded at YouTube almost four and a half years ago in December of 2013. And also, this is very significant, there's a recent news article from two weeks ago, on May 3rd, which is in the caption of this broadcast for you, right now, if you care to read it. And it's an accurate and eye-opening article with the history of the Vatican and Israel's rocky relations over the decades also talks about the fundamental agreement. So that's right in the broadcast caption for you right now. So all of what I've just talked about in this first category deals with the current momentum and increasing world focus on the state of Israel, which ultimately is setting the stage, all of the things happening now, setting the stage for Antichrist to step into the global spotlight for the nearing signing of the seven-year agreement of Daniel 9.27's prophecy. Now let me jump right into this second category, which is what we, all over the world, are hearing a lot about these days in the world news, which is the possibility of world peace. We're hearing it a lot now, these actual words world peace and safety, which is being heard more these days than at any other time over the last 70 years of Israel being reborn as a nation in 1948. And of course, right now, the two prime regions, geographically, where world peace comes up in the conversation, are the Mideast and also North Korea, where President Trump is scheduled, at least so far, to meet with Kim, Kim Jong-un in Singapore in less than 30 days, on June 12th. As you know, the two prime world leaders who we hear using these terms the most, of world peace and safety, without question primarily President Trump and also Prime Minister Netanyahu also uses these same terms, world peace safety. Now here's my prime point in this second category, which is that this talk now about world peace and safety is an exact 100% match to the prophecy of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3, which tells of a temporary false peace tells of a temporary false hope in the months leading right up to and at the start of the seven-year tribulation period. So without question, this current talk of world peace is clearly setting up the entrance of Antichrist into the global spotlight as a rider on a white horse, as symbolized in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. It's clear as a bell at this point. And 
also one of the Pope's significant patterns over the centuries is to keep himself in the world limelight, the papacy. It likes to be in the forefront and in the global limelight, always. Even to the extent, this is one of the patterns, even to the extent that when another entirely different world event suddenly gains the attention and gains favor of the world, like a huge parade coming along, figuratively speaking, and starts to upstage the Pope, then the Pope's pattern is typically to jump right into the forefront of that parade. Then he captures all of the praise and all of the attention from that point on regarding that particular event, since the Pope is the most exalted man on earth, second to none. So that's the second category today of the stage now being set for the entrance of Antichrist to jump into the forefront and jump into the global spotlight as the Pope will carry on and magnify this current talk and momentum that we're witnessing about world peace and security. Although, as I stated, and according to 1 Thessalonians 5.3, it's only a temporary peace, and it's only a temporary false hope until everything implodes into the worst living nightmare on earth ever for seven years, as identified, starting, in terms of the worst nightmare starting, starting in Revelation chapter 6, verse 4 being the red horse of Revelation. 